Let's go get a win. A rare losing streak in Reaver country. The Reavers have only had five of them in program history. On the schedule, the Conquistadors of Dodge City. On paper, a very winnable game. But as the saying goes, that's why you play them. We'll have the highlights on this week's NJCAA battle coming up next on the Coach Stro Show. It's the Iowa Western Football Coaches Show only on Iowa Western Television's Reaver Sports Network. From the studios of IWTV in Counts of Luffs, just get one. That's what the Reavers are trying to do. A three-game skid, something well, they haven't experienced only once before. The very first year of the program is when it happened, and it was a feeling that, uh, well, it hasn't really been missed around campus. Let's just put it that way. Hello, everybody. I'm Jake Ryan, along with head football coach Scott Strohmeyer. And, Coach, it's, uh, we, we brought it up. It's not a feeling you want to have, and it was after that Grand Rapids game in 2009. You had driven... What, 10 hours, <laughs> although it, the trip was much longer because the bus broke down in good old Gary, Indiana. Um, you got up there, you barely had any sleep, and you came up to the booth after that game, and it was a, a, a down feeling. You had just started the program, you were 0-3, and it was almost, it, it was a different feeling, but it was the same feeling that you had a couple weeks ago after that Garden City loss. Um, three games in a row, really something that, it, it's been nice. You haven't had to worry about that. For sure. I mean, I remember that uh, day up in the box uh, coming up there in Grand Rapids. And I think there, you know, we were just trying to get the program started and searching for answers and, you know, where the expectations that we had coming into the season to foresee a three game losing streak, you know, we didn't think that would happen. And uh, but that's like I said, that's why you play the games. And, um, you know, I don't want to ever have to go through it again. I'll promise you that. Yeah. Much different circumstances this time around. You guys have become a national junior college power. People, when when you come into town or when they come here, they want to leave with a victory. They want nothing more than to beat Iowa Western. And, and that first year, the talent level was different. The expectations were different. Now you roll into year number 11. You're number two in the preseason polls. Everybody wants a shot at Iowa Western. So tell me, I guess, tell me how it's different than before when, when you were on that skid. Uh, obviously, you've got the talent to win football games, and you've been very close um, all three losses this season. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how the feeling is different than the first year. Well, one, we were, we were the underdogs. We were the unknowns, you know. So we were going in trying to get a staple win and, or get our first win, I guess, and, and get that staple program win. You know, I always tell people it's a lot uh, harder to stay on top than to get to the top. And, um, you know, week in and week out, when you're dealing with the turnover that you have and trying to, year in and year out of junior college and trying to uh, – maintain that culture and the tradition you know some of these kids are here for six months you know and, and so they haven't had a chance to experience that uh, um, you know the program and, and you know buy in sometimes and and understand the expectations that we have here so they all know that we you know we're good and we're supposed to win and that's why they come here but there's more to it than just that and um, so that's why it's really different you know now is those guys are just we're trying to get them to buy into the program there's many people before that help get us to the top sure um, so now you got to come in and perform well, Dodge City very winnable on paper let's take a look at the highlights as Dodge City comes into this game winless on the year Reavers looking for a win it has been uh, uh, somebody pointed out almost 30 days since the Reavers last got one Dodge City will uh, go to work on the kickoff to start today's game Windy conditions, you expected that, Coach, did you not? For sure. I mean, every time you go there, it was actually better than I thought. I've been to some worse ones, I guess, but it was it did play a little bit of a factor. Cam Thomas going to work immediately, throwing to the outside. And, well, he had a, a few receivers that he hadn't had the last couple of weeks. Nice catch and run by J.V. Ante Richardson, who, uh, excuse me, right there, Tyler Blaha, that hadn't had a chance to get on the field. Well, it's really good that, you know, you got Blaha, um, Richardson, and then Barbie's second game right here. You can see the... You know, they were our top three guys coming over fall camp. This first game, all three of them played. Marcel together. just kind of adds an extra element to the receiving. Just a great catch, tiptoeing in. Chase Contreras trying to work the wind on that field goal. Kicked it too straight, which is something you don't hear very often. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's first drive, first of the first drive of the game, and you know, you'd like to get points out of that. But you know, I was I was pleased. We came out, got some first downs, and you kind of get into a groove. Pass interference penalty called keeps the drive alive for Dodge City. Their quarterback, Jace Orndorff. Uh, well, he was running for his life all day. Breon Dixon and Keenan uh, giving him a chase onto the far sideline. Keenan, Keenan was trying to give him effort, or effort to, to keep chasing him down. Reavers get the football back after they force the three and out. Another out pass to the outside. This one uh, a little bit shy of Javiante 
on that completion by Cam, but it was one of a very few missed throws by, by Cam on the day, and then you're forced to punt it away, and we'll look at the roll that Cody Lindquist gets on the punt. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he had a good day. I mean, it was, I think he averaged 48 yards a punt, or a little over 48 yards, but uh, had a really, the field position was huge. That one was uh, against the wind, and then a pass across the middle. Again, this their, that's their number one guy right there, and a good hit, good play. He would come back into the game, which is something you want to see. You don't want to you don't want to win games with their top guy out, and no. he did come back in. Yeah, he is their best player by far, and you know it was good. Cam did a good job breaking outside the pocket and finding somebody down the field. Yeah, Marcel Barbie on his way to another 100-yard receiving day. Cam this time to the near sideline, and the wind just catching a few of those passes. As I said before, though, not, not many not many passes that Cam threw on the day were off the mark. Unfortunately, on that drive, we had a touchdown call back because of a penalty, and then we had another penalty right after that, so we were in third and 36 or something like that. Devin Ruffin getting in the backfield on the quarterback. Reavers get it back. How about this pass? Nice down the field. Where was the defense on Zion Perry as he scores his first Reaver touchdown? <laughs> well, you know, it was, it was really good. We, we took both their safeties out with the inside receivers, and that put their linebacker one-on-one on the uh, uh, running back. Is that the first time we've seen him line up in the backfield this year, Zion? Yes, I believe so. But it works to perfection. 43 yards later, it's 7-0 Reavers. There's another QB sack as Ben Sorensen gets into the backfield on Jay Sorndorf. Ben had a really good day, you know, and he's really coming. He just plays with such great effort. How about the tip pass? Marcel Barbie hauls it in, tips it to himself, and then uh, gets down with inside the uh, inside the 20-yard line. Pretty good concentration for Marcel to haul that in and keep running in the process. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's probably one of the reads that, you know, Cam wished probably had back. We, we probably forced it, but, uh, you know, Marcel made a play. In and out of the hands of Lou Dorsey, the tight end on that attempt. Now here's Chase for his second field goal attempt of the day, and he knocks this one through from 24 yards out. The big thing is we gotta we gotta make those those receptions for touchdowns. In a team like this, you know, you're up 10 to zero or whatever the, I think the score is now. Um, they have a little bit of firepower that you don't want to give these guys life. Sure. And, and I thought we left 21 points on the field, um, you know, in this game. Darius James with the with the kickoff or return, and then they'll get it to uh, Atchison, their wide receiver. He flexes his muscles down 10 nothing. Dodge City still feels like they're very much in this ball game. Orndorff, well, he had time up until that rush. Look at Isaiah Coe come through and knock him down for the QB sack. It was good, you know, Isaiah, true freshman, and, and really starting to kind of come into his own. Orndorff down the field, good job by Avery getting back in coverage. Looked like he was uh, might have been a, a little bit slow to O'Hara, but he catches up and makes the play. And again, Orndorff running for his life. That was huge, you know, that was a drive where we threw an interception and put our defense in a bad, bad spot. and. And now they're fourth and goal from the you know, 27 yard line. Yeah, and they get a positive play on fourth down, but not enough. You guys force the four and out. 10 nothing. Reavers still trying to get some more points as this first half winds down. How about Deshaun Stoudemire? He had at least three <laughs> one-handed catches on the day. He did. He, he's got good hands. Um, and it was good to see you know, him gaining some confidence. At the throw to the outside. This time it's Stoudemire down inside the 15, pushed out of bounds. End up having to settle for another field goal attempt. And Chase Contreras, I tell you what, he's an element. You had some good kickers with, with Hunter Penninger and with Eddie Ogamba, but Contreras has just brought an element of consistency this year that has been missing the last couple of seasons. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm proud of him because he came in, you know, he, he uh, redshirted last year and he worked his tail off all summer long, um, went to camps, um, you know, and then we had a guy quit in fall camp and and it was just like a light switch went on. He's like, this is my job. He's kicking pretty good. Absolutely. Reavers with a lead at the break. Dodge City always strong at home. We've seen them come back in the past. We'll see if the Reavers can close it out. Second half highlights are coming up next on the Coach Stro Show right here on Iowa Western Television and the Reavers Sports Network.
From the IWTV studios, I'm Jake Ryan along with the head coach of the Iowa Western Reaver football team, Scott Strohmeyer. Coach, feeling pretty good after that first half. You discussed it last segment. You feel like you left some points uh, off the scoreboard just because of penalties. Um, we, there was one that we didn't see, Richardson making a catch down the middle that, uh, again, one of those blindside blocks that as soon as it happened, I knew what the call was going to be. <laughs> uh, we, we had some discussion in the booth, but you just knew that the subjectiveness of that rule was going to come into play. What, do you think anything's going to be done in the offseason to kind of alter what the perception is for the officials so that it's easier for them to call? I don't, I don't think so. I, honestly, anytime they see someone coming outside of their, uh, their vision and, and someone being depleted, yeah. it's going to be thrown. I mean, I, we might add four. Although they missed one on our interception, we got blindside blocked sure. and, and didn't get called. It's, it's so hard, and, and, and for so long you play the game that way. You tell kids to go back and give effort and make blocks, right. and um, it's taken it away. I don't know. It's first half time that you haven't had to chase a deficit in a couple of games. What was the what was the feeling like in the locker room? The guys feeling it. Where was it different? A different feeling overall, emotionally, mentally. One hundred percent. I mean, one. I thought it was it was a different feeling from pregame warm up to the first drive of the game um, with with a little bit of excitement and some energy, and then. Um, you know, when, at halftime, obviously, everybody was a little bit more upbeat and trying to get some. We had to make some corrections, and like I said, I felt we just got to play 30 more minutes. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at those second-half highlights. Reavers and the Conks of Dodge City. It's a 13-zip lead at the half, and the Reavers come out again in the all-white visiting uniforms. They're going to kick it off, and, Coach, you haven't lost many tosses. Now, I believe Dodge City won the toss and deferred to the second half. Um, you guys took advantage in that first half eventually, but uh, did you have any, I don't know, you, you think that they were going to get going here in the second half? Well, I, you know, I, my thing is I just want to continue to play. We have, we have to know where number one's at, you know, and, and you have to continue to play um, with great energy and get some pressure on the QB, which helps. And, uh, and I felt if we did that, you know, we were going to be in good shape. But it's a two-possession game, two touchdowns, sure. and it's... Speaking of QBs... Game. Their starting quarterback, Jace Orndorff, is out, so their backup played the rest of the time, and the Reavers go to work. Guess what? It's Cam Thomas. And how about Lou Dorsey well, scooping great. in? He saves uh, Tyler Blaha's bacon there as the completion is made, but Tyler loses the football. Dorsey makes the play of the year so far for him. For sure. I mean, just great, just great effort, you know, and again, it's, you want to score every time, but if you don't score, if you can do that, that's pretty good when you pin, pin a, a t an offense that you know, struggles from time to time. You, you don't want to give them, you know, short field. There you go. They're targeting Daquan Bailey Brown, number one. You said keep an eye on him. That one comes up just short. He can't haul it in, and you're back to work immediately. Cam to the outside. Stoudemire, another nice catch. Gets a block from Javiante on the far sideline. I thought our receivers did a really good job blocking um, this game. And that's something that's been missing this season. For sure. You and know. how about this catch by Marcus Rogers? That's a man's catch right there. He goes up, elevates, fights off the defender, and uh, you guys go up 19 to nothing. Contreras puts in the extra point to make it 20 to zip. Well, you know, Marcus, like Marcus had a great day blocking. Um, you know, he hasn't had been targeted that much this year, and he's made some plays, which is, you know, you love to see that, a guy who works hard. Nice catch from Daquan Bailey Brown, and uh, he gets a little piece of a face mask there, it looks like, so they get a few more yards out of it. And their quarterback again, finding number one. And how about, you saw Marcel Barbie earlier, how about that, spinning and tipping the ball to himself, races in from 55 yards out. That's a heck of a catch right there for Dodge City. It is, and, and I knew uh, once he caught it that there's not too many people are going to catch him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've seen him against Garden City on a couple long runs, but... You know, right there, so it, you know, it's 20, 20 to nothing. Now we give him a little bit of life to 20 to 13, but I think this is probably as big of an answer as we've had. Sure. Jason year. Murray, foreshadowing a little bit, gets a nice return, gets you out, and then uh, Cam to work to the outside. Who is it? Zion Perry. We have saw him already into the end zone. Gets you up and decent field position, another first down. And then uh, how about another running back right down the middle of the field? Cam floated that ball up, and it floats perfectly right into the hands of the Dowling Catholic product number three, Jason Murray, scoring his first touchdown as a Reaver from 55. Again, you know, you like to see Jason's worked hard. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities, and this was his game, and um, he can run now, and Cam did a good job, you know, of just knowing that the middle of the field was open and let Jason just use his speed. Well, 55 yards away, and then you're up 27-7. Here's the uh, fumbled kickoff by Daquan Bailey Brown. He had quite the day, didn't he? He gets up, into, ends up right inside the five-yard line, so, didn't handle that ball necessarily very cleanly, just trying to make a play. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what playmakers do sometimes. You just gotta make sure that it's the right situation, you know. Um, but we were fortunate, we had good, I thought our special teams played well um, this week and, and did a good job of, in coverage. You guys talking about the end of the third quarter, you're up handily, and now go to work again. Again, the, the excellent hands of Deshaun Stoudemire, you saw it already this game. He just leaps up, and more importantly, the momentum keeps moving him forward. Well, he, that's, he really did a good job of getting vertical and, and, like I said, our guys blocking on the perimeter, not dancing around. Get four yards, we're good. Shelton and Sheldon in the backfield. You saw Applewhite uh, race for a first. You activate Sheldon Cage this week because you're down a few bodies. Uh, the transfer from Ferris State, how did he do in his first game out? Well, I think, you know, he's still learning our stuff. He, ha he hasn't been involved in it for so many weeks, and that's kind of a, a transition that we have to kind of get to have these guys ready to go. But, sure. um, you know, shoot, we called him at uh, 5.30 in the morning, told him, let's go. How about Braden Wright <laughs> causing the fumble? Fitzroy Gardner scooping it up. I'm thinking, okay, he's going down. Um, Fitzroy was determined to get to the end zone on this play. <laughs> There's a special teams touchdown on the fumble recovery. Number 35 races in. Uh, 35 or 37 to 7 at this point after the Contreras field goal. The ensuing kickoff fumbled away, and uh, it's it, you're feeling pretty good at this point if your special teams are getting a battling touchdown like that. Gardner just not quitting. Well, you know, again, that's just great effort and, and just not quitting, stopping the play. You know, he could have went down, but he just kept fighting, and um, you know, I thought overall pretty good performance. Yeah, feels good to leave the longest road trip of the season with a W that certainly made the bus ride home easier. 100%, you know, uh, I don't know if I could have made it. I might have had to catch a flight or something like that, but that's a long drive and, and really, you know, happy for our guys of, of how they, what they've been through so far. And, you know, we were shorthanded in some areas and some guys stepped up and played and, um, you know, that's what you want to see. A interesting stat that I saw, Cam Thomas, 353 yards passing. And I'm like, okay, when was the last 300 yard passer that you had? Um, 2015 was the last time one guy went up and over 300. Now, the last couple of years, you had a, a various combinations, Kai Loxley and Kurt Walding, and then last year with TJ Starks and, uh, and Bethard. Those guys went over 300 combined, but not one well, guy actually, has gone for over 300 since 2015. So that had to be a pretty good feel-good game for Cam as well. Well, for sure. I thought it was his best performance that he's had in a Reaver uniform and, and really I'll tell you what, you can see the difference between a confident Cam and, and a guy who's not very confident. Sure. And, um, you know, he experienced success earlier. He had just a different mindset into this game, I felt. And, you know, again, happy for him. Corey Reed out with an injury. You add, though, Marcel Barbie second week in a row. Tyler Blaha and J.B. Ante Richardson were available. How, how much more valuable to the QB is it to have that many more weapons at his disposal? Well, I mean, it's huge. You know, now you got, you, you don't have to just stick into one guy and they can't overload or, or double somebody. And, um, and you can see what those three guys bring to an offense. You know, sure. you know, Richardson's just a, he's competitive, like he goes, you know, and, you know, Marcel uh, is kind of the vocal one and, and Tyler just goes out and does his job. And you know that if they make a mistake, they're going to give it, they're all doing it. Yeah, the blocking better, everything better. Ben Sorensen, Fitzroy Gardner, a couple more guys stepping up on the defensive line where you need it as well. Yeah, I mean, again, we were down three starters on the D line and, you know, we had to move Ryan Mel's inside, Fitzroy, SL, uh, McCall, Ben Sorensen all played significant minutes um, you know Jalen Fitzpatrick first game he's he's played and mm -hmm. you know we lost uh, Tucker um, Cruz early or in the second half or in the second quarter so he ended up having to play some too and it was his first college game that he played yeah. so I mean you know, Darius Moore started and played the entire game I was gonna um, say Moore and Haskins the, the combined uh, effort of those two was pretty tremendous yeah as well. you know and again it, it comes down to uh, they they are competitive um, you know, they're team guys, they, they want to, they're going to give us, maybe they're limited in some areas, but yeah. they're going to give us everything they have. And, um, you know, we've won a lot of games with guys like that. I know the rushing numbers were down, but I called it a complete game. I thought you guys played well in all facets of the battle. We did. And we knew coming in, it was going to be tough running the football with what they do defensively. Sure. I mean, that's what that defense is designed to do. And, and we knew we were going to have to make some plays in the pass game. And if we didn't, it was going to be a long day. Absolutely. And, uh, but I was pleased. All right, a win is uh, is important to get back in that column. A, uh, Reavers scored their four Reavers, excuse me, scored their first touchdowns of the season. One of them will join us next right here on the program. Wide receiver Zion Perry will stop in to talk with Adam Ireland. We are back in a moment with more Coach Stroh Show on Iowa Western Television.
the Dr. John and Jean Marshall Wellness Center, opening summer of 2019, Iowa Western. Drop the baby. <laughs> From the studios of Iowa Western Television, this is the Coach Joe Show. I'm Adam Ireland. Joining me now on the show is sophomore wide receiver Zion Perry. Thank you for coming on today. You're welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. You're out of Lincoln, Nebraska. You're close to home. How does it feel playing for Iowa Western? Oh, it feels good. It feels a lot. Like I, I met Coach uh, Aaron Terry out of high school, so I kind of had that connection before I came here. And then my mom can come to all my games, so it feels even better. What? So you went to Missouri Central out of Lincoln High School? Yeah. Um, what did you do there, and what like positions did you play? Um, I played football and I ran track there, both indoor and outdoor seasons. And uh, I played the same. Like I played outside receiver there, and uh, in track I ran the sprints as well. What's the difference between their team and Iowa Western? Uh, they're just two different teams. It's uh, two different offense and two really different systems. And uh, I don't know. I liked them both, and they're just really the best of both worlds. So and you know, and you said you know Coach Terry. What also made you come to Iowa Western besides maybe him trying to recruit you or? I mean, just a lot of the opportunities it has in front of it. Like, uh, I had a lot of friends come through here, and um, I just, it just you sit back and watch what they do at the program, and I just was interested in playing for them. And on Saturday, you guys played Dodge City. Mm -hmm. You won 37-7. to 7. You had two catches on the day for an average of 53 yards. Yeah. And your one touchdown pass is right down the middle. How did you get there? What were you thinking when the play was called? And what were, what were like your ideas? It's really all like from the huddle because we had been practicing that play all week. Like I envisioned it like myself. Like and so I was like boom, go out there and just right up the middle, one on one. He didn't go with me and uh, Cam just floated it right in the bucket. So I caught it and reeled it in. What was your like when the ball was coming towards you? Were you just looking at him the whole time while you're running down the field, or did you turn back at the time when the ball was about to come get you? Really, I just made sure I was downfield enough, and I knew Cam was. Gonna, I knew Cam. He he can throw it far enough, so I was really just getting out because I I don't know he might have. Do it far enough where I had to go out and stretch for it, and I was really hoping for that one, but he put it right on the money. So I was just really hoping, reeled it in, and put it in six zone. And as your first touchdown as a Reaver, how did that feel for you? And like, what was like the team's reaction to your touchdown and like first touchdown in a couple games? Oh, uh, the team, the team. It was a. Uh, I love just seeing their reaction, most of it, because like, I don't know. I just like seeing them happy for the most part, and it's just it's like beautiful when everything's flowing. That's how our coaches preach that, and uh. I don't really know though. It felt like a lot of weight off my shoulders because it's been a it's been a too overdue since I scored and it's, yeah. I don't know. Just as a football player, as a competitor, I just been wanting to get in the end zone. So if you're scoring more, are you gonna have like a signature touchdown dance or something? Because I saw you raising your arms and stuff, celebrating. I don't know. That was kind of in the moment. I don't when I when I usually score is just really in the moment. I don't have anything planned, but I might next time. What are you and the team doing to prepare for Ellsworth coming up on homecoming weekend? Well, we're going to go out there today and give it our all and just go 100% like we do every week and just stay dialed in, be real focused so we can get on the roll again. What are the wide receivers? I know you guys had a good game against Dodge City. Yeah. What are you guys practicing in practice this week to maybe change or, like, make better for Ellsworth? Oh, no. Our coaches just preach be, be perfect on that first rep. You don't have to go over it over and over. So we're just going to be perfect out there, try or give it our best every time we go out there. And just because if we, we're not giving our, our eyes receivers, we're not going to be functioning as a whole offense, and it's just not going to be flowing our best, so we're going to go out there and keep busting our tails every day. All right. Thank you for coming on. Yep, you're welcome. He's wide receiver Zion Perry. I'm Adam Ireland. Looking forward to this week's homecoming game. When the show continues, Jake and the coach will talk about this week's ICC-AC matchup with Ellsworth. More show show after this on the Reaver Sports Network and IWTV. Schedule your campus visit today. 
Iowa Western, the world is waiting. From Council Bluffs, Iowa, and the studios of IWTV, we are back with more Stro Show. All right, Coach, uh, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot of season left. Seven games in the regular season, plus a bowl game looms out there as well if you take care of business. So you go into a game this week that is, well, very winnable. You look at the records. Dodge City comes in. They have not won a game. You guys come in. You're struggling a little bit. It's, it's one of those games in the past that you'd be like, okay, that's a win. You go into this one knowing that you guys should get in there and take care of business. What do you know about the Conks? Obviously, they've got, uh, they've got uh, some familiarity with Coach Cox there but, uh, it, and some, some, I guess, Midwest football conference experience as well with their head coach, Ricky Kuhn. So what do you know about this year's Conks squad? One, I mean, they're, all, they're really young, you know, and he, they brought in, I mean, majority of the guys are all newer freshmen. Um, I know he's going to do a good job. He's a really good defensive coach, and, uh, you know, I'm seeing that on film. So they, you know, they, they lost a, a a game that they didn't give up an offensive touchdown, you know, and um, we'll have our work cut out for us. Plus, just like a couple other games, I mean, um, this is their, if, if they win one game all year, they want this one, sure. you know, with the former coach on our staff that's there, um, you know, and Ricky, you know, Coach Kuhn, who took it over, knows about our program as well. But, um, you know, we're, we, we, gotta, we got some other things, you know, I'm excited to go on the road, honestly, the first overnight road game um, of the year and getting the team you know, on the bus together and, and spend some time Friday night before the game to see if we can't get our, our minds set on, on, on the goal ahead. All right. The game, well, the next home game, let's talk about that first, October 5th. Homecoming in Council Bluffs in two weeks. The Reavers take on Ellsworth at Titan Stadium. And until then, uh, you can listen in uh, at 1 p.m. this Saturday. It's a long road trip, so let us do the traveling. And make sure you tune in on 89.7 The River or log on to GoReavers.com to watch all the action on Reaver Vision. Iowa Western Television, of course, will get you the game absolutely free. Watch it on your mobile device or your computer at home, wherever you uh, can tune in to the Internet. Thanks again to uh, freshman linebacker Avery Havis, head coach Scott Strawmeyer, and all of the hardworking IWTV students that make this show happen week in and week out. I'm Jake Ryan for Riley Teton. Thanks for tuning in for another edition of the Stroh Show here on Iowa Western Television and the Reaver Sports Network. Go Reavers!